everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. This is the Oceano Wines Artist Collaboration Series. My name is Rachel Martin. I am the co-owner of Oceano Wines and Vintner, located in San Luis Obispo, California. We produce Chardonnay and Pinot Noir from Coastal Vineyard, a mile and a half from Pismo Beach, and we make our wines in Napa. I too am an artist, and I use wine as the medium to express myself. And this is also all about collaboration. So the artists that we have on, uh, we do collaborations with. Today, our guest is ceramic artist Camille Morin, who is an incredible uh, potter, and she's a dear friend of mine. Her company is Bell Epoch Pottery. Um, Camille, thank you for joining and welcome. Thank you. Really stoked to be here. It's so exciting. I love this series. It's really fun. Thanks. Um, I welcome people to comment, question, um, and we want to answer those for you. So Camille, B Pottery is your Instagram handle. Facebook is Bella Pock Pottery, and your website is bellapockpottery.com. So tell us, tell us about the company, how you started, um, please. Yeah, um, so I kind of branded my business in 2013 to highlight my French roots and my love of all things nostalgic. So Belle Epoque um, means beautiful era, and it is, um, to me, kind of the celebration of the things in the world that um, are beautiful and true, and um, also looking back um, at the past as a way to uh, celebrate it and to um, enjoy that nostalgia and those remembrances. So yeah, I, uh, it's been a long journey and um, I launched my website in 2013 after years of wanting to set up a website and not knowing how and then just doing it. Um, but I was part-time for many, many years after getting my um, degree in ceramics in 1998 from the University of Tennessee, uh, where I studied studio art and my concentration was ceramics. So as a young adult entering the workforce, um, I worked for art museums, I framed pictures, I um, worked in art galleries and, and that kind of thing. And um, slowly I um, moved into a space where I could have a studio on the side and um, also, you know, works separately from that. But now this year marks the very first year that I am um, full-time in ceramics, which is uh, really wonderful, and um, that I have my home studio, which you see right here. Welcome to my studio. Here's my wheel where uh, all, the, all this stuff happens. So it's uh, really been an exciting year for me. Congratulations. I've been along that journey with you for the last several years, and I know it's a big step to be able to commit full time to your art and your craft. Going to uh, show some video um, of Camille um, at her throwing in her studio. So if you would, sorry, that's the wrong one, of course, that would happen to me. Um, one second, here we go. And oh, that's, nope. the that's it. That's it. Okay. Yeah, that one. That's not the cup yet. Okay. Hold on one second. Sorry, y'all, but <laughs> having a little uh, issue seeing my stuff. There we go. A little background on this. This is um, uh, from the studio that I was in in Washington, D.C. I have a friend who filmed this and put this together for me. And I, I think it just shows, uh, you know, some of the, the process, the tools, the, um, you know, talk about throwing pots and being very meditative and, and, and it's, um, something that I enjoy very much. Yeah, and it shows some of like your um, core styles and, and 
and some elements that are unique uh, to your brand. Yeah. Um, beautiful. Thank you. And um, so let's talk a little bit about our collaboration. Yeah. A good time. Yeah. Um, that was super fun. Super fun. Yeah. So I've been, sorry, I've been along Camille's journey uh, for years and she's been along with mine too. So Camille's quite familiar with the Oceano wines. This is our Chardonnay. I believe she has Chardonnay as well. And we wanted to find a chalice that you know, represented our collaboration um, and also, you know, is a physical manifestation of, of our friendship. So uh, this is a beautiful porcelain piece. Would you like to tell us a little bit uh, about that, Camille? Yeah, so I do what is, um, it, it doesn't have a great name. There's not a good hashtag for it. So I usually say print transfers. Um, it is, te is technically a transfer that is underneath the glaze, but it's, um, if you're familiar with ceramics, it's not an underglaze. I actually mix my own ink um, and uh, that has to be done it's fresh. Um, so let's start at the beginning. So the pot gets thrown. Um, the pot uh, dries, it gets trimmed on the bottom, and then uh, and then before it is uh, bone dry, it's in the leather hard stage, I do this printing process. So um, there's graphic design which goes into it, of course. Um, I have this wonderful seahorse image that I knew would look great. Um, I even had a graphic designer uh, friend reverse the tail on it so it would flip out the right way. <laughs> and uh, we went, you know, I threw out some ideas for the O, which I kind of love the O flourish that we chose because it reminds me of the sun over the ocean um, and just all that little swirly. So I, I love like kind of collaborating on that and then um, printing those images onto the raw clay surface is a process um, where each it's a laser jet copy that gets inked typically three times and um, I use a brayer I have two glass plates um, my printing station is um, right here behind me so I print um, right there and um, and uh, I dab and I rinse after each inking and then once a layer of ink has built up on the copy, it basically sticks everywhere where there's black in the copy, gets laid down on the clay surface, and then burnished with a spoon. So that happens for every single piece that I print. Um, no two prints are alike. Sometimes the saturation of the ink is a little different, and everything has to really be right. The um, moisture content of the clay, the consistency of the ink, um, so a lot goes into it. And then once it's um, printed, you cannot yep. touch it after that. You can't even touch it after it comes out of the disc firing. It has to have glaze put over top of it and, and go into the final firing. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, the symbolism of a cup in which you drink in the, the intimate uh, relationship? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, for for potters, like if you're a, pot, a potter, usually the thing that you collect are cups or mugs because it really is the object that can kind of put everything of your design um, philosophy, how you work, how you like to decorate into a small package. So it's very representative. It's also very intimate because it is um, the object that you know you 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 drink liquids from, you um, you hydrate with, and it's an object that touches your mouth. So it's it's very intimate. You know, it's like your lips are used for for kissing and for eating and drinking, and um, and so for potters it becomes very important. Um, this edge, which you know, is going to come in contact. Um, so I like to think of the shape of the lips and where your mouth comes into contact with that, and and just have that be a very fine experience. You don't want a big rounded, um, you don't want it harsh. It's got to be smooth and, and pointed. And well, so that's very important when, you know, for wine. So when we select wine glasses as wine people, wine professionals, we want uh, an experience with the, the, the drinking vessel to be harmonious. And so you don't want to feel 
really anything but the wine touching your lips. And so not only is it, you know, you're eating, you're drinking, but you also speak and you speak your mind and your feelings. And so I think that translates as well um, to the intimacy of, of the product. Um, you know, you do a lot. I have some of your work to show stylistically your work cha changes. So you have like mugs and then you have vases and you have, so you, you're going from maybe something more of a commodity type product to more of like works of art. So how For do sure. we, um, tell the difference between the two? How do you know when you buy from an artist that this is a special product? Right, right. And the world of ceramics is is a little is a little trickier to discern because a lot of times you don't know up front like what the experience level of the potter is. Um, everybody has a different aesthetic. So really choose something where the aesthetic is um, pleasing to you, but also look at the craftsmanship, you know, flip the pot over. Um, what's going on on the underside of the piece? Is it is it finished? Does it look completed? Um, were there any um, uh, kind of steps that you, you know see look like they were kind of skipped or glossed over? Um, a very good ceramic artist will pay attention to all the small details and take pride in that journey of the process from the raw clay to uh, the trimming to the decoration, and then you know ask. I mean, you can ask a potter, how long have you been working in clay? Do you have any special education? Um, do you have any, you know, like, what are your credentials? Like, you might want to know that for any professional. But certainly, if you're going to spend high dollar on ceramic art, um, and, then, and then I would also um, judge, like, how much of a bargain is this? You know, like really good ceramic art should not be super cheap. Um, it kind of cheapens the craft. But I do think that there's a lot of artists who start out, and I was one myself, who in their first five years, they're going to sell things pretty bottom dollar. But don't let that make you think that for a ceramic artist who's been working in clay for 25 years, that, that it should be comparable to that, because you, you should pay for that experience that that craftsperson has. Yeah, well, I would like to go through a couple of your pieces. and. You, you're inspired by music. I mean, you're really an audiophile, and um, we share a lot of similar tastes in music, Prince, Bowie, and um, I think it's really cool that you, you know, commemorate or, um, you know, put these people, with, immortalize them on onto pieces, and so tell us a little bit about that and why you choose the, the musicians and iconic musicians. Yeah, for sure. The musician series started in 2016, and um, when when we lost uh, David Bowie and in um, January, and then Prince in April. Um, I, Leonard Cohen died that year. Um, uh, George Michael died that year in December. So uh, I, it was just a bad year to lose all these musicians. And what I like about this printing process is that um, the image is locked underneath the glaze. Um, it is a little bit unlike a uh, decal, which is usually how you see images transferred onto the clay surface. They're put on as a third firing, which is an overlay. And it and over time, I, I it will abrade. It's like grandma's plates that might have those images on them. They, they fade out a little bit or that gold that gets a little abraded over time and with use. This will never fade. So for me, it truly is immortalizing the musicians in a medium that will be around for millennia. Um, even if it breaks, it's not gone. It's just changed its structure. So I also um, keep all of my shards and I make shard piles at pretty much every place I've ever lived. I've left shards behind. Um, but I do think that for these images, and um, I also commemorate people uh, with family photographs and I've done work like that before. And that's really important work to me because um, as important and um, contemporary as as photography 
um, and how it how we live in our lives with it, um, it's not as permanent as ceramic. So the fact that I can take photographs and images and put them into the clay truly is is making it continue on many many generations to come. So that's kind of my goal there. I, I call that musician series the Immortal Beloveds also, and um, all the work with that has um, the name of the artist and the birth and death dates. Yeah, it's beautiful. So you did a artist residency in 2018. Can you tell us a little bit about that experience and how you were selected to be uh, one of the resident artists? Yeah, it's really exciting. I found out about this um, this wonderful place in Star, North Carolina, which is about an hour from where my mother lives. And um, they have a program there for both glass and ceramics. Um, they also have little side programs for uh, ceramic artists and um, painters and that kind of thing. But the glass and clay are their two biggest um, things that they do there. It was an old textile mill that was sold to a nonprofit for a dollar um, with the... Um, with the agreement that it would be used um, to um, be a boon to the community and have arts programs for the community. So they do that. And it is a poor rural area era area. So um, I did some pieces that were frames. I worked a little outside of my normal box. Um, I created plaster molds from picture frames. And um, here is one of my, my pieces from that. Um, so again, you can kind of see how that photographic image um, is preserved. That's the back. So these were um, slabs that I press molded into these. And then I did this piece. I did several skateboard decks. Right. Um, so this is rather, as you can see, it is life size and it is um, got even grip tape. And this one is um, called Nevertheless. Um, all of the images on this deck are tattoos that were um, sent to me by people and they represent some sort of um, major event in the person's life that they felt they had to immortalize that reminder on their body. So I wanted to immortalize it on the ceramic. And all of each of those images has a story. And those are all tattoos of, from women. So they're all the stories of, of things that were survived and recovered from, which was the theme of my residency, which was about how do we get through, um, as we age, more and more difficult situations in our lives, um, things that can be um, depressing and heart-wrenching. Um, I put out a survey and I had about 30 people take the survey and give me feedback, which was telling me how they um, recovered from their trauma. So I was looking for themes and that those were the images that went into um, some of the framed pieces. And um, well, how, how did that experience, um, you know, affect your 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 work or that you know the work that you do and sell on your website and uh that you bring to to craft shows yeah i think that the point is is um is embracing that the positivity like you know looking toward look like they say like look for the helpers it's kind of like that so the things that were shared with me were things like you know friends uh family pets uh faith music, um, you know, kind of these universal truths that if you stop and think about it, of course, these are the things that help us through dark times. But it's good to to remember that and to to focus on it. Um, I created this image um, with for <laughs> this year um, because I also want to inject humor into my work. Um, you know, with, with COVID-19 happening and people being isolated, I was trying to find ways of commenting on it as an artist without being depressing. Um, I didn't want to make um, work that highlighted the sadness, but work that kind of maybe poked fun at it. So I, I did a bunch of work with uh, hermit crabs or um, I had, <laughs> you know, we're all hermiting or I had trays where there'd be two people standing a distance apart and facing the opposite way you know kind of just talking you know just trying to poke fun at it a little bit so um where 
are you're located in Flor in Neptune, Florida? Yeah, right? Neptune Beach. Uh huh. And this little window right here um, has a tiny little ocean view, so I can see a little piece of the ocean uh, from my studio, which is is wonderful. I'm very lucky. So, um, and you you do craft shows locally. Yeah. And yes. you have what is it? When is your next show? The last show of the year. It is this Saturday at the Riverside Arts Market, which is a, a wonderful event that's been going on here for, I think, over a decade. Of course, I'm, I'm new to the area, but they do it every Saturday. And it is under um, these big bridges that go across the St. John's River. Um, from so December 19th is yeah. the crop show, if yeah. uh, anyone can, can catch it. But also, you can see all of Camille's work on her website. I'm sure not all of it, but a, a good amount of it. And also on her Instagram and Facebook. And I love watching the videos that you post uh, to Facebook. It's just mesmerizing to watch you do what you do. And you do it with such ease and, and grace that um, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. You should uh, play the video with the throwing the cup. Yeah, so <laughs> this. Yeah. Go. So I sped up a little bit, a portion of this. That was probably going um, some of these. So there's a lot of fine tuning here that happens once you pull the, the form up. And, um, and, and you know, it, it doesn't always turn out <laughs> like you. <laughs> And so uh, let's do that again. Slow motion. Oh, burr, burr, burr. yeah. That been one of your cups, but uh, you know, I, I think one thing I want people to take away and understand that uh, if I take an order for six plates, I, I might have made nine for you. Th this happened recently with an order for my uh, my pottery teacher from high school ordered a set of plates for me. And um, two of them cracked in the bisque on the edge detail that I had a cut edge detail. And then uh, one of them in the glaze firing had some little doodads down in the bottom of it from like kiln dust. So you can't predict. Um, so just take it into consideration when you see the prices of handmade work that um, the ceramic artist also deals with a lot of loss and frustrations. And it doesn't matter how many years you've been at it, it it's going to happen. And if it and if it doesn't happen in the making process, it might happen in shipping. And then then you're remaking those pieces. Right. Well, tell us a little bit about your custom uh, glazes. Yeah, so I mix all of my own glazes from scratch. They're essentially recipes of powdered chemicals that get um, put into water, um, and it's a solution. And um, there, there's a lot of science involved, which is, is funny because I almost failed advanced chemistry when I was in high school. It's not my fault. I got mono. But at any rate, I am not a science person, but this is probably the craft uh, that has the most science involved in it. It's not just like, oh, you pick a color and you paint it. Um, there's chemistry. There's um, a, a lot to it. So I, I made some moves to simplify my, my work and create some base glazes, a gloss, and then also a satin, um, both of which are used on the Oceano cups. Um, I put the gloss on the inside because it is uh, a little more durable. That's a good takeaway for um, people listening is that glossy glazes are actually better to hold up as food or beverage surfaces. Um, it's also a good idea to not use pottery that has a crackle to it um, with food surfaces because um, microscopic bacteria can slowly uh, get in there and build up over time. So that's another mark of a, of a good pottery. They use what's called a good liner glaze. So I take a base glaze, I split it, and I add different stain combinations to get these colors. And I'm always going with that because I'll, I'll have a batch that'll get low and then I'll make another batch and I'll mix it or I'll mix two together. So um, it, it replicating that is, it, I can do it, but I really prefer to work in a little more freeing way to where that color palette is um, expressive and ever-changing. Yeah, tell us about uh, this piece, and it might be a little bit difficult for everyone to see, 
Yeah, so the Prince Plate. Um, the, the Prince Plate uh, is a print transfer with a transparent uh, purple clear that I put on top. And then the gold is done in a third firing. And um, the gold comes in a very tiny vial. It's like this big. It's, I think, an ounce. Um, and uh, it is real gold mixed with uh, tuline. So it has a very noxious chemical odor. It should be applied with ventilation um and yeah and it's very expensive that little vial costs usually 45 dollars. so i probably put about half of a vial onto this plate um i should probably charge some more money for it. <laughs> Um, yeah. Right. And, it, but, and also that plate was decorated on the back with a purple underglaze that was um, carved through with Prince Rogers Nelson birth death dates. And then it's usually I put a quote on there like um, life is just a party and parties weren't meant to last. Um, nice, nice. Yeah. So I love these pieces as these like kind of sacred pieces. They're functional. They're functional art. And I really believe that art should be affordable and accessible to people. And I've always found it a great irony that the art that has the addition of the functionality is actually valued less um, in, in society just on the the grade of hey this goes on the wall it's this level of art this goes on the table it's that level of art but that, well, that is, that's just the way yeah. it is yeah totally well sandra hickman chimed in thanks for supporting and that you're amazing you truly are uh, such a talented gifted ceramic artist um and, and many other things as let me talk about <laughs> gifts this wine oh, yeah. is a gift. <laughs> this was a wonderful gift that you sent, and uh, I am enjoying it very much because I shipped seven packages today. I feel like Santa Claus on crack, uh, but I'm <laughs> that uh, yes. all of that is off of my plate. <laughs> pun intended, and um, yeah. I can relax a little. The, the holidays for any uh, craft artist is is a really tough time because you're just, it's make, 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 and I unloaded a kiln this morning, and yeah. that one got shipped out right before well, this. Please, everyone, uh, like and follow Bella Pock Pottery, Camille um, Bella Pock Pottery on Instagram, be pottery. Facebook, Bella Pock Pottery, make sure you spell it right. <laughs> and uh, also like and follow Oceano Wines and we are at Oceano Wines. If you do all four and if you share the video, I'm going to send you an amazing discount code. So uh, for wine and free virtual tasting. So yeah. support, you know, local artists, support, local wine producers uh and wine producers at large um we're uh small businesses camille and i happen to uh have women-owned businesses and um it's great to support uh, those of us who uh, haven't been uh, highlighted uh for for decades <laughs> <It's not laughs> that's right that's right we're getting out there we're, we're telling our story y'all yeah I gotta, I gotta say something about your chardonnay um usually if you're a wine drinker you're kind of like eh, on chardonnay or you're like yeah chardonnay this is a chardonnay that it doesn't matter if you hate Chardonnay, you will love this wine. It, it is delicious, you guys. And, you. and um, I can't wait to try the Pinot Noir, um, which I have not tried yet, but I'm going to be sharing. Well, you her. have a bottle. You have a bottle, and I appreciate you saving it to share with your mother yeah. uh, during the holidays. That's a beautiful thing. So, Camille, when you're not throwing pottery, hand building, and all those things, what, what do you do? to blow off some steam? What, what is your passion? Besides well, may, some people don't know this, but um, you can also find me at Camo Skates, and that's um, S-K-8-S on Instagram. I am a roller skater. I've been roller skating all my life since the 80s. And at age 40, I decided it was a good idea to start dropping in on uh, ramps 
and uh, skating in skate parks. Um, so about two years, three years after that, I think I was 43, I did my first vertical drop off of a 12 foot half pipe. Um, so if you want to see videos like me uh, falling, like stepping off of a building is what it feels like falling straight down um, into a transition of a half pipe. I do that on roller skates. So it's um, I'm keeping it wheel, as I like to say. <laughs> yeah, well, you're fearless and it takes that type of courage uh, to be a solopreneur as you are and as you've been um for so many years and i can relate to that um, i'm also a solopreneur and it takes a lot of courage not only to continue on with the business but to start a business uh at period so tell us camille what are the next steps for bella Puck pottery uh in 2021 well, um, I'm going to keep doing my um, Riverside Arts Market twice a month. So I had stepped up and this has been great for me because it really does push me into getting that work cranked out and producing more work. Um, I only have the two hands, um, but I have been working on new forms. I have been adding to my website. Uh, you can find online ordering for pint glasses, whiskey cups, um, my eight ounce juice cup, and um, and then mugs as well. So I have four forms that you can custom order on my website. Um, and I'll keep adding to that. Um, I, I do a lot of commission work. I did two bowl sets, stacking bowl sets based on work that was in my gallery um, that a friend from high school had seen and shared with his friend. And so they both ordered these bowl sets. Those went out today. Um, so those bowl sets are around $175 um, for three stacking bowls. Very functional, very beautiful. And then aside from that, I'm just going to keep trying to wear that that marketing hat, that production hat, that um, bookkeeper. Is, bookkeeping is a big goal of mine this year to get streamlined with that. And just the more processes I get down pat, the better I get at offering everyone a product that is um, coming out of the kiln on a regular basis, reliable, functional, beautiful, because I really do love being a part of those moments and memories. And even though I might be the cracked out Santa, I, I love, I love um, being in that role of providing gifts for people for, for special moments, special people, and just having my work in people's homes. Like I think about the volume of work that I've created and how my little clay babies are everywhere out there <laughs> in the world. It is, um, it's overwhelming and um and, and really wonderful to to know that and um, to continue doing what I what I love and also this year I have health insurance so that's a big yeah. well, that's, thank you, you know, that's, a big step. that's a big step congrats on that too um before we Thanks. sign off I'd like to know more about why you choose porcelain why that is oh. a medium that you've attached yourself to? Well, very good question. And thank you for asking that because porcelain is the, um, ask any potter, a lot of them won't touch porcelain. It is super finicky. It is um, super, um, it likes to fall down. A lot of people would say it's like throwing with cream cheese. So you're going to pull it up and it's going to sit back down. Um, you have to have a, a good working capability with lots of experience to make porcelain do what you want it to do. And again, I still get, I still get cracks, you know, I still get issues. It's because it's such a fine body clay that is super super pure it has a lot of silica in it um so it is also let me see if i can show you um translucent in light let's see if i can show you so if you can see you can see light through porcelain so it's it's i think it's, that's so amazing it's pretty phenomenal. There's a wonderful book that I read that that um, back in the 1700s, porcelain was the gold standard. It was the 
um, sign of, of wealth because it was only imported from China, from the Far East, from Japan, Korea, and it had been being imported for over a thousand years before the Europeans cracked the code on porcelain and were able to figure out how it was even, it had those properties at all. They couldn't come close. So it was worth gold. Um, it was worth a lot of money and and it still is i still think it's it, it's a beautiful um the fact that the clay is pure white and um and it does and it costs more as well it's a, it's a dollar a pound so there's that cost in it as well it's a little bit more expensive than traditional stoneware or earthenware but it takes glazes beautifully it's like a canvas so if you want to have a canvas for your glazes i i, ch I choose white because then i can make any color and i can create the rainbow and that's that's what nice. I like. that's beautiful so don't forget to like and follow Bella Pock Pottery and Oceano Wines, and we're going to hook you up with a discount code for some wine. That's so right. Think, and if, yeah. and if you like and follow um, my Facebook and my Instagram, I will be sending out a discount code for orders on my website. So please do that as well and um, and and message me for that, that code. Cool. Thanks everyone for joining us and thank you Camille for being part of this. I can't wait to see what's next for 2021. Um, wishing, right. Yeah, wishing everyone a healthy and safe holiday season. Uh, we'll be back with more of our collaboration series uh, after the turn of the year. So um, happy new year as well. Thank you, Rachel. Bye. Cheers, friend. Cheers, my dear.